All right, so this is what Adsoft's matrix looks like. And as you see on the horizontal axis, it has products and on the vertical axis, it has markets. So it's, it's basically using those two criteria uh, to identify the type of strategy that the organization is thinking of uh, implementing. All right. So if you are, for example, taking an existing product into a new market, then we would call that strategy a market development strategy. All right. If you are taking, on the other hand, a <clears throat> uh, exists a new product into a uh, existing market, then we would call it a product development strategy, which is all well and good. But here's the thing. So what? All right. Well, the so what is this, that once we have identified the kind of strategy that we are actually going to be uh, uh, implementing, for example, market penetration, then what we can do is think about, OK, well, with market penetration, what are the things that we want to think about? What are relevant? So we want to sell more of our, our, our product in our existing markets. So it's called market penetration. So we need to think about competitive advantage. How, you know, assuming that the market isn't growing, right, it's stagnant, we're going to have to take some market share away from our competitors. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use or try and gain competitive advantage. How are we going to gain competitive advantage? Well, something called Porter's generic strategies, and you should remember what those are. All right, focus, differentiation, and cost leadership. So connected with that market penetration strategy, we will need to think about generic strategies as a way of making them happen. What about existing products into a new market? Well, that's called a market development strategy. And again, with lots of things that are connected to this kind of strategy. The first is, of course, research. What's a new market like? More brand awareness, you know, not only how well is our brand known, but how well are our competitors' brands known? How do we find out? Um, we need to think about how we're going to enter that market. Uh, for example, is it going to be a joint venture or are we simply going to employ an agent in that market who knows how things work there? All of these questions need to be answered, planned for, resources allocated and people made responsible for, okay, in a market development strategy. Let's move now to product development. Well, we're taking a new product and we're selling it to our existing customers. So what are the kinds of things we might think about here? Well, we w might want to think about, well, um, how are we going to uh, uh, make or introduce this product to our existing customers? We have, of course, brand awareness, brand strength. Uh, people, people know us. We have lots of uh, um, net, uh, distribution networks already in place, okay, which is great. All right. But then let's look at our uh, value chain activities. OK, are any of our value chain activities the same? So if we're making refrigerators now when we want to sell washing machines, then things like the purchase of raw materials. All right. Is going to be the same activity. Much of the production is going to be the same. Um, the way that we market or sell our new product is going to be very similar because similar people will buy both white goods. OK, and once we can integrate those value chain activities for more for this additional product, then we can increase our volumes. We can exploit economies of scale in those activities. And of course, if we learn something from uh, selling refrigerators, OK, that we can use on washing machines or vice versa, then we can gain uh, synergy for doing this. OK, so those are the kinds of thoughts that we need to think about if we're going for a product development strategy. And finally, a diversification strategy, a new product, new market. Now, a diversification strategy, what are the kinds of things we, we're going to think about? Well, very often companies diversify because they want to diversify business risk. All right. Um, so they are uh, selling instead of having a hotel in one in one city, they'll have a restaurant in another city in a different part of the country. That's a very simple example. It's based on a past exam paper. 
Okay, so they want to diversify business risk, which means that if the hotel industry goes down, hopefully our, our, our restaurant industry will go up and we overall will come out uh, with a net positive uh, cash flow in our business. Or we might diversify simply because we want to exit a market. If you think about uh, the tobacco market, the cigarette market, for example, you'll find that some of the large producers of tobacco, for example, British American Tobacco or Philip Morris, um, are actually diversifying into all kinds of industries, including, for example, insurance. Um, and the aim is that as the tobacco market becomes smaller, those other markets will become bigger. Okay, so the company is exiting very slowly the tobacco market. Or lots of companies diversify into completely unrelated areas. Why? Well, because they feel that they have the management skills and a business is a business is a business. And so it doesn't matter what kind of area, what kind of industry sector we are in. Okay, we are simply such good managers that we can manage them. This is called conglomerate diversification. And it is used where, for example, you have uh, um, you know, a new industry or an industry coming up which is making super normal profits. All right? And the board of directors says, hey, why don't we invest some money in that industry? Now, conglomerate diversification was very popular at one time, but now it is less popular because overall studies have shown that the returns are lower with this kind of diversification. So that's what Ansos Matrix is about. Identifies the kind of strategy we're thinking of following. And overall, of course, we are guided by how will this help us to achieve our objectives, our corporate objectives, in a sustainable way. And what will our stakeholders think about it? So, for example, um, will our stakeholders who are very risk averse uh, not like our market development idea. Okay, they'll say, well, it's a new market. We don't know anything about it. We don't want to go there. So here we see an example of risk being connected to uh, 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 an Ansoff's, to Ansoff's matrix uh, strategy option. All right. Um, other things that, that are relevant, which I haven't mentioned, things like change management, all of these strategies are going to require changes to the way in which we operate, the way in which our stakeholders respond to them. All right. But of course, change management is relevant. And as part of our thinking, we will need to incorporate change management in those. Okay. So it's actually really rather complex overall, but it's the Anthos matrix is there really to give us some kind of framework something to say somewhere to channel our attention going forward.